Hey, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I'm doing another uh, Work in Progress Wednesday video, which is basically just I show you all the stuff that I've kind of been working on and that, you know, I don't, none of them really make sense for a full video or anything, and I have had a lot of cool stuff happening in the last few weeks that's just gotten me real excited, and so I just need an opportunity to share everything with you, and also it's just like a really nice day where it's not a nice day for going outside necessarily because it's a little chilly, um, but it's like got that nice cloud lighting and it's like raining on and off and everything's just nice and quiet. And so I feel like this is, you know, the day to film something. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess like the big thing that's been happening lately is that I have been at this local art gallery, um, and I gotta back up a little bit so I can tell you the whole story, but basically, like, I went to this cafe downtown, like, a month or six weeks or something ago, and, um, it was just, like, some overpriced cafe where I was gonna go and hang out and work on something, and I had some zines in my backpack, and so I was talking to the barista, just, you know, chit-chatting after she took my order. And um, then when I went to pick it up, I, you know, I kind of got like a queer vibe from the barista. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm really, I'm really trying to put myself out there and actually meet people in the area now so that I can sort of establish connections and friends and, you know, settle in more here. Um which is something that I've really never done before anywhere that I've lived. I've just kind of been like floating around and I've met a couple people, but I, I very rarely do. I feel like I have a big community. So I really am trying to reach out to things and sort of build that. And so I go up and I was pretty nervous about it, but I was like, okay, I'm going to go up and give the, give her one of my zines. And like, I realize how maybe that was a mistake <laughs> where not, not the sharing the zine thing, but you know, I definitely didn't want someone to feel cornered or, you know, bother someone while they're at work. But it's like, there was nobody there. She seemed pretty chill and pretty queer and like, it was just nice and quiet. And so I just thought, you know, like, well, yeah, you know, if she doesn't like it. She can throw it in the trash. I don't care. And, um, so I went up and brought, like, I always carry some zines in my backpack, and so I brought a few issues of, um, Unfair Maiden number three homecoming issue, <laughs> um, just because this, I like giving this one out whenever I randomly want to give someone a zine, because I feel like, um, it's kind of the most, it's interesting, and it's cool, but it's also, it's not to it, it, like the the subject matter of kind of the uh, the concepts of home and moving and complaints about command strips and that sort of thing I feel like are a little bit more universal than you know my satanic theme zine or my gender theme zine and that sort of thing um anyway so like I go up to the counter and there were a couple other baristas there and so I would have felt weird giving just one of them a zine and so I brought three up you know one for each of the baristas up there and I go up and I say like I'm really sorry. I hope that this isn't weird, but like, I've been trying to meet people and I was wondering if you would want to read my zine and I, you know, could give you a free copy. And she, and you know, the one who I had been talking to was like, yeah, that's totally awesome. And, um, pointed out that the cafe, which I hadn't noticed it, but the cafe had like, a sort of like a little free library where people could leave, um, art things like, um, I don't know. I honestly didn't take that close a look at it because I didn't have as many zines. Like, I didn't have enough to bring there, but I just kind of, like, put it in the back of my mind. It's like, oh, if I wanted to drop my zine somewhere, I could drop it off there. Um, <laughs> and so she seemed really cool about it, and she gave them to the other baristas. And then I went back to the table where I had been, you know, had my drink now and been planning to sort of get set up. And then I overheard some of the baristas sort of talking to each other about, like, um you know, you just, you just need to be careful about, um, like, counter stalkers is how they described it. And basically, like, they were kind of, the two other baristas were kind of warning the blue hair first one that I had 
you know, give originally thought like, oh, you might like the zine, that apparently something that people will do is like go up to a counter at a cafe and kind of um, knowing that the person can't leave, they'll pressure them into like trying to sell them something or otherwise trying to get like too cozy and familiar with someone who's at the counter. And as soon as I heard that, I felt so bad and I felt so embarrassed and I was like, oh shit, I really should have known better. I really should not have done this. Like, I did not mean to make anybody uncomfortable and I really was just, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm like, I don't know how to meet people and I thought that it would just be kind of a nice gesture and if she didn't like it, it'd be fine. And basically, like, I was trying to basically just, like, slip, slip a zine in there and run and then if she wanted to, um you know, read it or not, or <clears throat> like say hi or, or, or whatever or not, like leave it at that. And I definitely, I didn't mean it to be like, it wasn't flirtatious in any way. I, I wasn't trying to sell anything, but like, as soon as the other barista said that, I realized like, oh man, I fucked up because I really, this is probably putting them in a really uncomfortable position and I just did not even think about that, and I should have, about, like, this is not the right place for this or something. Like, I just felt so bad, and I, I like, packed up... I tried to make it look subtle and kind of casual so that um, I wouldn't make the the baristas feel even more uncomfortable, but I basically was just like, okay, I'm going to pack up and I'm going to leave. And I was so embarrassed and I felt so bad and so guilty about it that I was like crying on the way home. Um, and so that was incredibly awkward. I can't believe I just told that whole story right here. Um, it took like fucking six minutes. Um, that was incredibly, I felt really, really bad about that. I felt really embarrassed. Um, but ultimately, it turned out okay, <laughs> because I guess that um, one or two or some of the baristas left uh, the copies of my zine that I had given them in the art share box that they had at the cafe for other people to pick up and find. And it was through that that like a month or so later, someone emailed me and said, hey, I found your zine at this cafe, and I really loved it, and... Um, like, I wanted to see if you knew about some of the queer arts events and, and like, trans people in Salem. Like, you know, do you, are you still looking to make some friends out here? Are you settled? Like, do you want to come to some of these queer events? And that was really great. Um, so, uh, so of course, I responded and was like, oh, fuck yeah! And, you know, I, I the guy who emailed me is like, I did not tell him the story about how I didn't actually mean to leave it there, but maybe sometime I'll tell him. Um, but it was through that, and through the recommendation of the person who emailed me, and I did end up meeting him, like, that I found out about this um, rather new local, like, outsider art gallery called Shoe Bones. And it was so... It's so cool. And so I... I went there, they had like a drawing group meet up every Sunday. And so I, the next Sunday I, you know, messaged the organizer and said like, Hey, can I come? And they said, yeah, totally. You know, it's just one of those things where you let them know ahead of time if you're planning on coming. And, um, I showed up and I met some queer people and really loved the gallery and the gallery owner. Who's like this really fucking awesome trans woman. And, it honestly was, like, the most comfortable and at home that I've ever felt among a group of strangers in a really, really long time. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was really cool. And um, I guess I'll just show it just to give you some sort of visual instead of just me talking this entire time. I've got a couple of drawings that I um, made during that uh, meetup. Like, I didn't go in with any plan or anything, and we're not drawing models or whatever. It's literally just come draw and hang out with cool people. Um, and it was really, really fun and just really, really awesome. And I did a, some Ron Muffin art. 
So, anyway. So that, that's that been happening, and I'm really excited because I'm going to be tabling at a vendor night that they're doing on uh, this Thursday, which I guess by the time you're watching, this is like tomorrow, <laughs> which is really, really exciting. Um, and and I'm, I'm very excited to sort of um, build this relationship with this gallery, I guess, and, and like um, hang out with all of the cool people involved and, um, you know, have some of my zines there for people to pick up and take home and just you know, it's been like really cool where I feel like I've actually started making some community and, you know, met people and swapped phone numbers even and talked to them and lent one of them an air mattress and just like, you know, it's just like already at home. I'm already, already made friends and it's super awesome. Um, so it's kind of through that, that I feel like I've had the, um, okay. It's not even just that. I feel like all of the stars have kind of lined up. Like, all of the circumstances for this to finally happen have kind of, like, settled into settled into place. And, and I feel like, well, now it's time for me to take the opportunity. So I'll stop being all vague about it. But basically, something that I've wanted to do for a really long time is to have a zine distro. Where I'm not just trying to sell my own zines, but... I have other people's zines available and I'm able to, you know, pay zinesters um, for copies of their work that I can then host and sell online for them um, and, you know, do some of the marketing and bring them to local events and otherwise just like spread the word about these really awesome zines that people are making um, and of course be able to support them somewhat by purchasing multiple copies at once. Um, yeah, like I've really wanted to run a zine distro <laughs> and I've wanted to do that like for years now. And, um, obviously it's like, it's a really big undertaking. And I feel like now everything has just kind of lined up where I'm in a place, uh, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, an apartment now in a city that I plan on staying for a while. So I feel like I can really, you know, establish myself here. I, um, just over the last couple of weeks, it's kind of worked out that, um, I've had a little more money lately because my therapy is, my therapy copay is, is gone now. Like my, uh, insurance is now covering my therapy, which is really awesome. <laughs> um, and so now I can actually afford to buy zines from people and, and buy enough to like have it a distro. And, um, in going to this, uh, shoe bones gallery, and meeting the owner, Frankie, I feel like it just kind of... <sighs> it made me realize that it's totally possible. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, like... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just, like, watching Frankie run this art, this outsider art business on low margins and focus on community building. It's like, that's totally what I want to do with a zine distro. It's like, it's not about trying to make money and it's not about trying to, you know, have a physical store and it's not about trying to like market things for Etsy or whatever. Like, the whole reason that I want to do a zine distro is, like, for one, to have the opportunity to um, support zine creators that I really love um, by sort of being the one to give them, to, to, like, pay upfront costs for them. And I think that, like, the benefit of a distro and what I, what I really want the distro to be is, like, an a way to take some of the burden of sales and marketing and shipping off of zine creators so that they can keep making zines. <laughs> um, I feel like there's kind of a lot, like, distros are really cool, and, and other every other distro owner out there is just, well, I, I guess I haven't met all of them, but, you know, distro owners in general are just really kind and caring and they do so much for the zine community 
in that they, um, they tend to be representatives of zines to people who are not familiar with zines, which I'm totally already that. And I think that's, that's really great. They, and they kind of have the opportunity to show some of the variety of zines out there. Um, they're able to bring it to local events. And so for people who just wouldn't know where to look or, um, you know, just happen to have not come across this one fabulous zine story, you can say here, you know, here they are. And you can, you know, share, share people's work and, and, and sort of be a voice for them in a new community, which is really awesome. Like a new area. Um, and there's a lot of other benefits too, about just like being able to, um, you know, what, how it works basically is that the, uh, zine creator will ship you zines in bulk. And then that means uh, that makes it easier because it reduces shipping costs because you're able to send a bunch of them at once. It offsets some of the printing costs because they're able to get paid for their zines up front. Like, obviously it's slightly less than retail price because the distro owner has expenses that they have to pay in running the distro. Um, but you know, they're able to make something and they're able to, to like, um, get, get, get paid for their work and, and offset some of the cost of printing because a lot of times like you, you're sitting here on a big giant pile of zines that like, okay, you know, I spent $200 to print all of these and I'm not going to get that back for like a while. Um, and so Distro, uh, you know, the nice thing about the nice experience that I've had in selling to Distros and, and offering my work at Distros is that, you know, it's able to offset a lot of the printing cost, which is nice. Um, and then, you know, you just really get to, it makes it easier for people who are looking for zines because they can kind of shop for zines and discover new zinesters in one place, um, both online and in person and like all that stuff I was just saying. And, um, it's also really great for zinesters who are from overseas. If you sort of ship it in bulk at all at once and take care of all of the customs and VAT and whatever the hell you have to deal with, then you, the, it makes it more accessible for people in the distro owner's home country to access these zines. Um, anyway, I feel like I'm kind of trying to sell the concept of a zine distro, which I don't need to, <laughs> but they're really, you know, I just really, all of this is to say that I've really admired distro owners and I've really admired people who run distros. And so it's something that I've always wanted to do myself. And I just kind of decided like, well, fuck, like I can, so I'll just do it. <laughs> and I'm trying not, like, it's not going to end up being like a big launch or anything. It's just going to be one of those things that it's like, I start adding more and more zines to my online shop and buying zines from people and looking for zines from people and, you know, start building a little inventory or whatever, and then just take it to events and... <laughs> that's, yeah, there you go. Take it to events, have it online and just like see what happens. And if nothing else, like I've been able to support a lot of these zine creators. So that's kind of what I've been up to is going out and, um, buying zines and setting up the website and taking product photos and like, um, writing descriptions and generally just like setting everything up. I've made this cool <laughs> little collage thing that I can bring to events and that I can use for advertising. I've also been playing a lot with Instagram lately, um, where I kind of like, I had an Instagram and never ever used it. And I just kind of bit the bullet and was like, okay, fucking fine. I'm going to use Instagram. And I kind of hate and hated Instagram and I still kind of hate it. Um, but I think almost what I hated more about it was the idea of obligation. The idea that like, if I really wanted to connect with zinesters that I would have to have one or that like I'd be at an event. And then the first thing someone would ask is like, Hey, what's your Instagram? And it's like, you don't, f you, you don't know my name yet. Like it just, uh, I, mean, I had that very punk mentality. It was like, you know, don't tell me what to do. Don't ask me for my Instagram. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> so I was very resistant for a long time and I'm still not like sold on the, 
you know, on, on Instagram just as, like, a site, as a concept, as it's run, whatever. But I will say that, like, for for the purposes of being, like, an online corkboard, in a sense, like, it's specifically on, like, Zine Instagram where a lot of people are just kind of saying, here, you know, I'm looking for submissions, here's, you know, a new distro that's opening up in my case, or here's my zine that I just made, here I'm doing pre-orders for this zine, or, like, I'm gonna be at this event, and, you know, f for, like, staying abreast of all the, uh, zine happenings, it's been very useful, and I am gonna start contributing to that, like, I, I have, and I've, I've been enjoying and kind of playing with Instagram lately, and, um, so I think the fact that I kind of did that and was, like, feeling more comfortable with that it was another one of those stars that all lined up for just making making the distro. Yeah, so I guess um, for my advertisement portion, I have my distro available at 22zines.com where you can buy my zines and um, the zines of um, people that I buy from. Okay, I didn't know how to say that. <laughs> but like anyway, like I'm 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 buying zines from people and I they are all, you know, super awesome <laughs> and I am gonna have them available on twenty two zines dot com. And if you have a zine that you really want to get out into the world and you're just not sure how or you don't wanna deal with running an online store and shipping and all of that crap because it is a bunch of crap sometimes, let me know and, you know, submit it to the distro. And I can, if, you know, if I think it's a good fit for the distro, then I'll pay you 60% of retail, you know, like cover price for five to 10 copies of your zine, probably like it all, it all kind of depends. And, um, or I'll do a trade for anything that you see in the distro, like, that's another thing that I really want to do is, like, as I'm setting up the distro is to kind of, um, take and take approaches that, um, really focus more on getting things out there, and so the, my other plan, and I'm, I'm kind of organizing how to do this still, but my other plan for the distro is to basically be, like, a trade facilitator, so if you have zines that you want to contribute to the distro, and you see a bunch of zines that you like in the distro, then I will send those out, and I, it's basically, like, store credit, but you know, I'm trying not to think too hard in terms of dollar amounts, but like, um, yeah, so, so everything in the distro, whether it's made by me or made by somebody else is also going to be up for trade, um, which I'm really excited about, honestly, because I, I think, um, that's a lot more exciting than, <laughs> than like $2, <laughs> you know, like zines, zines are, are cheap. Zine margins are very low, and I would like to keep it that way. I'm very excited about that. Um, and that's sort of another thing, is that I realized, I'm sort of modeling this off of the way that Shoebone's gallery does it, is that um, I'm trying to keep the margins for the zine creators really high. Like, 60% is kind of on the high end of what someone, what most distros are usually able to pay um, for zines, and... Um, now I completely understand why, <laughs> because there are a lot of little costs that go along with running a zine distro and even just running it online and, you know, having store hosting and having payment processing and having website domains and having all these things and they kind of add up and then there's like shipping and transport costs and then shipping materials costs and then any time that something's lost, like you kind of have to eat that and then, um you know, transportation to zine events and sometimes tabling fees at zine events and just all of this stuff. It's like, yeah, I, I kind of, until I really looked into it for real, um, it's one of those things where it's like, I knew that, yeah, you, you need to make something to cover your running costs and all that, but holy shit, <laughs> there's kind of a lot of stuff that comes up. So my plan is that I'm going to try to keep the, um, margins for the zine creators as high as I can and try to continue to facilitate trades and that sort of thing and just have an option for people to donate to the distro separately. Um, 
and just like to help cover some of the particular costs that come with running a distro. And I feel like that's a little bit more in line with what I want to do. Um, because when I'm at events and that sort of thing, I really like to operate on a free slash pay what you want model. And honestly, it's mostly because I really hate sitting at being the seller and sitting in a place and being and and having people constantly ask like how much is this how much is this because it feels like any number that I give them I don't know what that number is going to mean to them and more than anything I just want them to walk away with a zine and so if I throw out two dollars and they don't think it's worth two dollars or they don't have two dollars or they just like I don't want any price to scare somebody away because you know I just don't care that much. Like I want, I want them to go home with zines. And what's kind of funny is that I feel like it's almost harder to convince someone to walk away from the table at like any of these sort of events with something if it's free than if I have prices attached to it. And I guess because it's like, if there's prices attached to it, then the only people who are really going to be like coming up and asking a lot about it are people who have the money to spend. Um, and I think that, well, I don't know. I think that people just get a little shy of like, they, they're worried about taking too much or they don't want to, you know, they're not sure if they really want to, you know, take advantage of, of your, of this offer to take it home for free. Like they feel bad about it in some way. Like, oh, well, you know, but what if, I don't like it as much as someone else would have or, or, you know, but I would, I think it's worth money and I just don't have money. And so I'm not worthy of this zine. Like, does that make any sense? Um, so at events and that sort of thing, I really like to have these free or, or pay what you can, or like basically free or donation model so that anything that's on the table, it's free or donation. And I really, really want to continue to be able to do that. And so far at events, it's actually worked out quite well where every time that I have, made that an option. I have ended up making plenty to cover, um, printing costs and, and whatever costs to like get myself there and, and get myself a fucking lunch while I'm, while I'm there. And so it's like, it's, it's fucking great. <laughs> like if it works, if it covers my, if it ends up covering my expenses, because there really are enough people who want to support the the zine creators like in the past it's just been me but you know presumably if it's a distro it'd be for any of the zine creators then you know great why not so i really want to i want to try doing that and i want to try to find more ways to like incorporate that model into running a distro and running it online um while still ensuring that i'm not going to lose money on it. Cause it's sort of a lot easier to lose money when you have a lot of shipping costs involved and a lot of like purchasing and shipping. And I, I don't know. So like my idea, this is my plan is like basically the price, the retail price of the zines is going to cover the cost of acquiring the zines and paying the zine creators. And that's basically it. Um, and then the donation thing is going to be separate for the distro. So I'm basically like committing to the costs of running the distro. Um, and then the zines are just going to cover, you know, getting the zines and sending the zines. I feel like that was kind of a lot of money talk, which I <laughs> didn't mean to get into, but you know, it's work in progress Wednesday. And that is my work in progress. <laughs> it's obviously a lot of stuff to, to sort out and to figure out. So now let's get to like the flashy stuff. Now let's get to the art and other stuff that I've been wanting to share. Um, okay. So, um, another thing that I've been doing lately is, um, I've had these, these little, they're just notebooks. Like it's just line lined paper in a notebook where I, um, they originally, you know, were notebooks that had covers on them and I just took off the covers to use for other things because I never used the notebooks as they were. And I really liked the pattern on the covers. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll just use that to make some other art and I'll just have this as like scratch paper. And, um, so lately I've just been really enjoying doodling on these and drawing 
you know, because it feels super low stakes, because it's already lined and because it's just trash paper. And so I've just kind of been drawing in like ink with no pencil beforehand and it's been really fun. So, uh, and the other thing that's nice is that like, I can just kind of tear, I can just kind of tear it off. Like when, I, when it's, when it's done, I can just tear it off. Um, so I have a lot of that floating around my house right now, but I'll just show a couple that I have. It's like, you know, this is sort of a fancy, this is one of the nicer looking ones. And then I've got like, um, moody emo goth on a motorcycle and, um, <laughs> the like dorky emo anarchist teenager. Um, and then sometimes it's literally just doodles like this. <laughs> this was all done on the train. Um, and then sometimes some of them come out really cool, like this one. It says, at what point will I become original? Which is something that I've been struggling with just artistically. Like at what, what you know, at what point is my art like original art? And I don't know. So I really like this one. I think I'm going to bring this to the vendor night and see if anybody wants it. So I've been doing that a whole bunch. Um, let's see. What is the next thing that I'm going to be doing? Okay. So now I guess I'll just share this. So this, this is my, um, my solution now for how I'm going to present my collage box where I sort of mentioned last time that I end up with a lot of originals that I don't really know what to do with. And I can definitely say like I, uh, JR, by the way, if you're watching this, thank you for the reminder that like I can do mail art things and I'm super jazzed to do that. But it's also like, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like I want them to go to somebody who really wants them. Um, so I don't know. I, I, figured now that my solution <laughs> is that at events and things, I'll just have a box. And this is just one of my, you know, shipping, shipping boxes that I generally use to store zines. And I'll have an originals box that people can flip through and then they can take it home. And it is, again, it can be another like free or donation. You see an art piece that you like, fucking take it. And that way, I think what's also nice about that is that anybody who attends this vendor night they can go home with something, even if they have zero money, even if they have zero interest, it's like they might find something that they like and they're guaranteed to be able to go home with it regardless of any other, like, thing. <laughs> any, any other limitation. So I thought before, I'm, so I'm bringing this to the vendor night and I thought before I did that, I would just go ahead and like show these off because, you know, they might be gone and I wouldn't know what to, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to show them off anymore. So, um, this is like just a little art ink drawing with a raven. Monetary value is fake. This was potentially going to be a zine cover, but I didn't end up writing a zine. So it's just been kind of sitting around. It says beyond the vanities of swans. This is an the original for a uh, postcard that I thought of making, and I didn't end up making this particular one into a postcard, but like I had a little series of postcards that looked similar to this. So I thought, you know, I'd put the original up. It says medieval and loving it. Um, absolutely inspired by Mel Brooks. Um, this little collage thingy where um, there were these ravens that were in a box of like a uh, collage supplies just, um, in a little free library. And so I ended up making this little, I don't even know what you'd call it. Just, <laughs> just a little something. That's the thing is like, that's the other thing is that I can just make this the originals box and I don't have to worry about categorizing them. They don't have to have anything to do with each other. It's just a cool little box. I've got, um, <laughs> Rachel has a secret, which is, um, so I saw this, I saw this book cover literally on the side of the road. If you can't tell, it's like got asphalt texture and I saw this cover and she's got this fucking rainbow heart letter. And so immediately my brain's like, Rachel's a lesbian. Rachel's a lesbian. Her secret is that she likes girls. <laughs> and of course that's not what the book is actually about, unfortunately. Um, but um, that's what I'm making 
the book about, or at least the book cover. So, yeah. This is just like a little, I don't even know, journal page that someone can write on. Um... I'm kind of, I really like this one. I really like how this turned out. I did this several years ago, actually, and it's just a, a drawing on metallic paper of the statue that I have that I really like a lot. <laughs> um, and so there's that, and then there's, this is from like a postcard that I had that I really liked, and I cut out the desert part and painstakingly cut out all of these, um, like, uh, palm tree fronds and stuff from the blue sky background and, you know, covered it in the gold to blend it a little bit. And then this here, like this piece in the back, is a, a package from a, a bag of ginger candies that my aunt sent me. <laughs> and then I just drew this on top to sort of make it. But yeah, like, I really like how this one turned out. <laughs> and I hope somebody likes it. Um, I'll probably go through some of these really quick. I've got the new Satan. <laughs> new wave, same problems. <laughs> um... Let's see. I can see in the dark, but my head is still spinning. It's got an owl on it. I got this lioness that says rulers of the world. The lioness has sort of a um, partner piece with a lion that says rulers of the heart, but I want to keep this one because I think it's really pretty. Um, my the psychic girl. <laughs> from the back of a comic book. Um, these things, which I don't even know what they are. People can use them in like a junk journal or something. They're just like these little collages just from literally trash that I had in my recycling that I felt like, you know, I don't want to just recycle it. I can, I can do something with it. So here you go. That's, that's something. Let me try to stick these back in right proper. That, that way. Okay. This thing, which honestly, this is unfinished. Like, I had a lot of plans for this one, but I just really can't think of anything else that would make sense to add to it. Um, the thing, it, it kind of looks like charcoal, but this was done with the uh, remains of a candle wick, where basically I was at the end of a candle, and this was like the wick, and it had been all frayed, and clearly I had burned it a really long time, and so when you pinch it, it makes that can that like burned ash dust that you get from candle wicks. And so this was literally just drawn with my finger and a candle wick, <laughs> like the ash from a candle wick. So I feel like, well, you know, at least with that story, someone might want it. <laughs> I suppose if there's anything here that you guys are watching that you're like, oh shit, can you mail that to me? You know, comment and I'll see if I still have it because I highly doubt that people are going to be chomping at the bit to take all of these things home. Um, this I, is just the original for my uh, contribution to the airy scene. And uh, so like the last video that I made is about that. And I feel like this is pretty, you know, someone might like this separately. Like I have no, I'm not going to do anything with the original now. So, you know, why not just put it in here? And then this is just like another little random random collage that I made while I was hanging out with a friend of mine. So yeah, a lot of these are very collage-y. I'll probably go through my sketchbook and see if I can add some drawings as well, but I don't know. I feel like the, I feel like drawings don't, oh, I'll probably, um, I'll probably put this in there too, but I feel like drawings, I don't know, like, <laughs> I guess I get a little bit more self-conscious about my drawings. Like, no one's really going to want this. No one's going to want this. So why am I putting it in here? Oh, while I'm at it and while I have it out, I was going through my, like, an old just sketchbook where I had done a lot of these collages, and um, I was reminded of this piece that I did a while ago that I really, really love. <laughs> it says, The Sailor Scored, and of course, you know, I drew this cat and then collaged these bits, and I don't know, something about this feels very like 
fancy, very professional, like, oh man, like you could see this at a gallery almost. And I'm keeping it just because it reminds me of my dad, because my dad was a sailor and then he was in the Navy and um, he was just, I feel like black cats just remind me of him a lot because he had a couple, he had black cats while he was growing up and we had black cats and I don't know, this whole thing just reminds me very much of my dad and so I'm keeping it. <laughs> but I wanted to show it while I had it here. Um, yeah, and then in addition to that, I've got these little postcards. I'm also, I finally got around to putting these postcards up in the, in the distro. Um, give a hoot, read a zine. <laughs> really love this one. I give this one out all the time. Um, I've got a few of these, like, magic-y looking postcards, witchy ones. This one says, learn to believe in the art of magic. Your fortune will be made if you do. And I thought I had the other ones here, but I put them somewhere. Hang on. Hang on. Let's see where I put them. Here's one. <laughs> just, like, random witchy lady. Again, these were all collages just from... Um, random books and, and like materials from, um, Salem tourist season advertisements. Um, here's this one. Uh, this line is from a, uh, like a, an abridged version of, um, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and it says, oh, he's a curious animal and seems remarkably small now that I look. <laughs> And then this one, which is my favorite. Bloodlust, darling. <laughs> um, and this uh, pentagram was like, I got a pack of leggings and this was the packaging. And admittedly, like, I probably got the leggings in part just for the packaging. <laughs> and so I finally got the opportunity to use it there. Yeah, so I've got some of those. I'm bringing some stickers. I'm bringing... Oh, shit. I almost forgot about these little ones. Um, I also have, like, this little set of, like, baby business card size collages that I um, was just going crazy one day and had a bunch of, um, like... Sorry, I'm, like, trying to reset here. Okay, so I have, like, this big old pack of um, Farmer's Al Almanac, like, old Farmer's Almanacs, and so I was just going through and collaging with some of the pages, and I'm just really... They're all very different from each other, but I don't know. They, I guess they kind of count as, like, a series. Meow, dude! <laughs> um, I'll just try to go through them kind of quick, because I have a whole bunch of them here. Got this werewolf. This was the first one that I did. Making an unusual friend. <laughs> I like this one. I'm almost tempted just to keep it. Charm. This is a sticker that I got from Charmzine, and so I had to draw a rabbit with it because, like, lucky charm, lucky foot. Oh my god, I love this one. Congratulations, you won. <laughs> um, another hyena. Games, magic, tricks. Another hyena. <laughs> I was on a on a hyena bender. This says, perhaps some of us were rather too full of mischief at times, but we enjoyed every minute of the day. Um, this little owl. Someone please turn on the dark. <laughs> um, undead and loving it. <laughs> Another Mel Brooks <laughs> reference. I got this little cat. And some flowers. I told you there were a lot of these. Foxy love. Comfy, cozy, and cuddly warm. Stupid thing. Just this little, like, Gila monster. Come on. A badger who is starting a band. You you can take this and hand it out to people and be like, I'm starting a band. <laughs> um, another badger with good advice <laughs> to quit your job. 
Attention, false teeth wearers. Beware. Cat. <laughs> really like that one. And then this one's probably my favorite, and I really hope that someone takes this one. <laughs> Ladies love me. It says, girls can't resist this kiss me necktie as it glows in the dark. It's like an advertisement for a fucking glow in the dark necktie that says, will you kiss me in the dark, baby? <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, so I've got like a bunch of those that I'm bringing to. Um, I also have this little series that I, of collages that I did, and it's just like the Love and Anarchy series, and basically it's just because I was doodling and I did a whole bunch of these little like trans symbol with the heart and the anarchy um, A in it, and so I ended up doing some collages with it, so like they all just say the same thing, Love and Anarchy, but they all look slightly different. And a lot of them, you know, they're just like from different um, comic books and manga that I have for the purpose of cutting up. I feel like the colors aren't going to come up quite right, but this is like a neon highlighter. Um, so it's sort of like that greenish yellow, glow in the dark yellow. Love and Anarchy. Love and Anarchy. Again, I'm 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 showing all of these just kind of for the sake of having a record of of them. How am I gonna hold this one? Love and Anarchy. And big surprise, love and anarchy. Yeah, so I'm gonna be bringing those. And all of this is like alongside all the zines that I've got and a few zines that I have from other people. And in fact, like let me just pull out <laughs> Let's see. So, for the distro, like, I, I've spent the last week on, like, a zine buying spree and, and like, contacting zinesters to see if they'd want their work included in the distro. Um, but, naturally, a lot of them I'm waiting on for shipping. But this one, um, I reached out to someone on itch.io and asked if I might be able to um, pay them to print the zines myself, basically. Like, I would pay them... Um, 60% and then I would just print them because they're mini zines, uh, they're color, but like I have a color printer. And so it's like, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just print them myself if that's cool, because I really want to distribute these because I think that they're really awesome. So, uh, luckily <laughs> he said, yes, he said, yes. Um, and that's, uh, gender zero bender is the, um, Instagram and the itch.io. I'll, I'll link it below of this zine creator named Charlie or, um, also known as Constantine. And there's these two zines that are so cool. They're these two mini zines. Um, and I'll just go through them. This one is called the three of swords and it's kind of about like the relationship with the medical establishment as a disabled person. And it's just so cool. Like the, the text, it says, I can show the doctor where it hurts, but he can't make it go away. I can open myself up, but they can't put me back together right. I know what's wrong, but it won't save me. <laughs> Knowledge is power, but not being disabled is even more powerful. And there's, there's like a lot more text with, you know, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to contain myself. <laughs> this is such a good zine. Um, and like, here's, here's one of the images that's in it. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like about this, like this like tarot and, and alchemy image themed zine about disability. Like, holy shit, I have to have this. Uh, I have to, I have to share this with people. So it's called three of swords. You can download it for free or for, um, donation. Like part of the reason that I wanted to print it is so that I could, you know, pay the, <laughs> the zine, um, maker. But, you know, if you don't have the money to, support the zine creator, then you can download it for free or donation. And, um, if you want a physical copy, then you can get it at the distro, 22zines.com. And then here's the other one by Charlie, Discourse Queen. <laughs> and this one is basically about like, um, toxicity in online queer spaces and basically like the bullshit that is fellow queer people who are, um, 
like sending you death threats and bullshit online, like, and kind of just the internal strife and hatred that manifests itself online. Um, and like, it's, it's, it's a deep topic, obviously, but it's also pretty like accessible. It's, it's, it's pretty, I'll just read a little bit until you get kind of the vibe of it. Um, Help, the rules of discourse queening. The worst faith interpretation must be the right one. Uh, if dehumanizing others is bad, why did God make it feel so good? <laughs> Don't think too much about why you hold minorities to a higher standard than their oppressors. Your follower count is your life force. Do whatever you must do to keep it going, even if it means live streaming your death. Never let a drop of genuine emotion slip out. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff in here. <laughs> um, so if you want to be a discourse queen, read the scene. Or if you don't want to be your discourse queen, then you can just paste this up. Uh, and just to remind yourself that you are valid. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously, like, I had to get those zines, and I've got a bunch other that are on the way, which is really exciting. <laughs> and again, if you have a zine send me an email, <laughs> um, because I really, you know, I want to share them. And I also do printing here, like, like with this one. So, you know, if you have a zine, but you're just not able to print enough copies to send them out, then I can print them and, you know, still pay you the same price, but just minus the print cost. Or if it's a mini zine, I'll just fucking print it. No worries. Alrighty, that's pretty much everything on my desk. Um, oh, not quite. Okay, so I guess I don't totally know if I have the authority to announce this, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm sure that my friend Emily will not mind. I have been working on a collaborative zine with my friend Emily. We don't have a title yet, but it, we'll get there. <laughs> and I'm super, super excited. It's basically, the whole theme has been kind of like um, being a... Uh, being an artist and being a uh, sort of magic, magical artist, or being a, you know, as as Emily describes herself as like a soul-led business owner, how to do all that, and what it's like to do all that in a fucking, you know, capitalist online world. <laughs> and that's, it's like, it's kind of hard to sum up the total theme, because it's a lot like my other zines, where it's just sort of a collection of different articles on different things. Um, and some of it is sort of directly about that and some of it isn't, some of it's musings, some of it's advice. And, um, it's just, I'm so excited. Emily is so cool. She's such a good writer. She is so like, she's so mystical. Like, like she is a witch, like whether or not she is a like whether or not whether or not she she says that she's a witch like she is a witch you know those people <laughs> so um obviously the pages that i have here are just my pages but i've been really enjoying them here's like a few of the titles i guess we have the many pitfalls of creative honesty the magnum opus um this little collage piece Express yourself so we will know how to hurt you. Um, learning about human design, aka astrology too. That was fun. E Emily is a big human design um, buff and very, very talented at um, human design readings and that sort of thing. And I had never really heard about it before. And so you get to come with me on my journey of what the fuck is human design. Um, yeah, and I have a few more, but it's like digital and. Um, so that's going to be put together pretty soon, which I'm really excited about. And yeah, I think, I think we're just about at the end here of, of our pieces. I think we pretty much just have like a little bit introduction, a few little collaging to do, like the text is pretty much written and then the cover and then we're done. Holy shit. That's really exciting. Yeah. So I guess that's what's, what, that's what I've been up to. And I'm really really happy about it. I feel like I've really started to meet people. I gotta say, like, people have been sending me zines, um, via email just to read or to potentially talk about. I've, they've 
people have been reaching out to me to set up trades and I'm like, it makes me feel so cool. It makes me feel like a fucking celebrity. I am like, I am so <laughs> just flattered and honored and just everything that people are like sending zines to me of all people <laughs> like and sharing their zines with me and that I get to do the same and I think that's another reason that I really wanted to get the, the just just like fucking do the distros because it makes me feel like a celebrity to be able to <laughs> share people's zines and just like really be involved in this lovely warm zine community sounds like my partner's up, which is good timing because I'm just about wrapping up here. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Been meeting lots of people, been making lots of art, and I've been showing lots of art, and I've been buying lots of zines. And I bought another tarot deck, <laughs> the uh, Gentle Thrills Tarot, which has been on my list for a while, and I finally splurged and went ahead and got it. So here's what we're going to do to like wrap up the video. I'm going to pull a card from this deck just for the sake of having some tarot in this video. Because <laughs> why the hell not? 